Okay, the foundation portfolio presentation, group 106, and this is the last group, group E. Um, our thrill is called Mimeograph, because it's the process of forcing ink for a stencil onto paper, so it's like a tattoo, basically. Um, our USP is going to be um, the replication of like real <coughs> serial killers. Um, our main character um, is a forensic photographer. She has a sister called Beth who died brutally suddenly. Um, she always felt second best to her sister. Um, and then all the bodies keep turning up and our main character is on the verge of psychological collapse. Our equilibrium is that she works during the day and kills people at night using ideas from serial killers that she studied at work. Um, Basically, she kills people that, or preferably girls, that are non-brunette, um, dyes her hair brown and writes survival on her wrist, and that's because Beth, her sister's called Beth, and she has a tattoo of survival hidden on her hip. Um, she dyes her hair brown, so it's like she's repetitively killing her sister over and over again. And we chose survival because it's ironic, because they aren't survivors because they're dead. Um, she keeps her secret obsession to herself, and nobody suspects her. And she killed her sister out of jealousy. Um, victims have similar features to their physicians for beings, as I said before, and there will be a love interest who will be a fellow police officer. Uh, our disruption is that Beth, uh, not Beth, Frankie is going to leave behind um, a clue that has something to do with Beth. Um, it could be on purpose or just for a bit like excitement and um, adrenaline. Um, but her clue actually leads her colleagues closer to figuring figuring out that the person killing all these people is actually her. Um, new evidence about Beth's death is going to be revealed because her body was never actually discovered. Um, this leads Frankie to become really paranoid and so she leaves um, for a few days, just disappears, um, which makes her co-workers even more suspicious because the killings stop when she leaves. And our new equilibrium. Um, Frankie is eventually found out, um, and there'll be a scene in the film of her arrest. Um, the scene will jump to ten years later when Frankie's in prison, and there will be newspaper clippings um, about her and Beth and the victims that are involved. Our overall structure will be first making a non linear narrative.
reality of killers that she's um, studied the work as you already know. Um, we also use Dexter, which is a famous TV series, which is basically where we got most of our ideas from. We're not copying it completely, but he's a, a blood splatter analysis and he kills only serial killers and no one's going to think. Um, and also Disturbia, which is a remake of the Hitchcock film called Rewindow, which is basically about a man who um, who's also a serial killer, but no one really suspects anything apart from someone who's been arrested and he's like keeping an eye on him. But yeah. <laughs> Um, for our opening title sequence, we're going to focus on certain features such as just um, like hands and sort of the lab and um, like pictures of Beth and Frankie together and sort of like um, newspaper articles on Beth's death. So we're not going to actually show um, the faces to give it away. So it'll be close ups. Um, for marketing, we're doing, because um, it's quite a low budget, we're going to uh, do things on like social media, so like Facebook, Twitter, that type of thing, because um, it's free. Um, possibly do like um, a small advert on radio. Um, we're going to put a trailer on YouTube, because it's really popular and it means that our target, like, target audience, uh, which is teens from like 15 plus, um, will be able to um, view it which means they can share it with all their friends. Um, and just to summarise, um, our main character is a forensic photographer for the Bryan Police Department um, and she's also a serial killer and nobody suspects really until the end and then she's found out. Questions? So she is dead, the sister. Yeah. So what what's the reason for leaving that sort of open for the audience? It's like if people knew that Beth, um, like certain things about Beth's death, they'd link it back to Frankie. So by leaving it open, we leave um, like a bit of mystery to what Frankie's had to do with in her life. So it's not really central to your storyline, really, but it's it's, it's a MacGuffin, so, really. Obviously it relates because it's like Frankie recreates her death, um, but because no one else knows that she's actually dead, it's not, they don't link it back to her. So why she's become a like, serial killer in a way because of her and her sister. Like, so it's the reason, re reason for her kind of schizophrenia. Yeah, but she obviously didn't like her sister and she was. But it's not the dr main driving force behind the storyline. Yeah. What um, I'm interested, you said it's going to be a non-linear narrative. I wasn't sure why why it was non-linear. Because we're, we're sort of going... We're like it's like flashbacks, like, it, like in Catboos and Kevin. Like it's, it doesn't flash forward and flash back. We're just, well, yeah, it does kind of. We're, just, we're still a bit unsure that it will be non-linear. So it just creates that tension and it will confuse the audience, but then it all comes together at the end. And, and when you talked about your equilibrium at the beginning, you, you, you were su suggesting that she is a serial killer. Is that just telling it in the presentation, or you're not revealing that to the audience no. straight away? No, no I'm not revealing it straight away. We'll just leave like, clues that the audience have. Yeah. 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 Yeah.